Next is Warp Sun. And maybe you're thinking we're straying a little bit from the monster theme of this show. Or maybe we're not. It's game business. Remember, kitties, there are real monsters out there that will eat you up. We walk amongst you. <laughs> Warp zone. Ah. <laughs> I hate that thing. I <laughs> 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 Greetings and welcome to Warp Zone. My name is Eric von Wees. My name is Molly Hedy Carroll. And today's subject is going to be about the game business. Basically the behind the scenes of uh, what our audience might not see or be involved with. Yeah, we're in the games industry ourselves, so we see a lot of this stuff, but it's, it's fascinating because it's weird. It's very weird <laughs> at the moment. It's come a long way. Lots of different business models have been tried out for the last couple of years now. And uh, it's going everywhere. No. I think the thing I think the game business most people come into contact with like the gen general people is uh, uh, big games that you see in the shops and stuff they're uh, called triple-a games they're like the, uh, the they're the equivalent of summer blockbusters for film and uh, the way that they go about making these games is interesting because making games is a very complicated uh, process and they're making it very expensive so it's 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 a tricky it's a tr I wouldn't want to be in their position, but some of the things that they do are very odd. <laughs> yeah, they have a big business. They can't really take that you know that many risks. So you know they're looking at the numbers, what sells, um, yeah. and you know they go for that. But the thing, understandably is, so. The problem is though that a lot of because they're trying to get as much money out, you end up with these very uh, unorthodox and maybe a little bit immoral business practices like uh, social media games like free to play having to always be online. Games where you always have to be online and go to a server to play it, that basically means that when they have stopped making money off this game, they can just shut it down. There's you game, can't play your game anymore. You can't play your game anymore. There are games only a couple of years old now that yeah. people stop playing, so we're going to shut it down. And you paid money for that. And you paid money for it, yeah. exactly. You pay, And not a little bit of money, a lot of money. Some games are like 60 plus euros yeah. new. And you know, it's a good thing that, you know, you have the, the big companies out there, but you also have the little guys, you know, that got, they played the games from very early on and they want to create the games that they like and yeah. they're not very restricted to all these... Uh, That's called the indie scene. The indie scene. Yeah, the indie scene. Which is a very great place to be. And, you know, they're, they're trying to make use of the same business models here and there. You know, they're trying out to get by, you know, what it, how, how you know, how you can make some money off. Because, you know, that's fair enough, you know, but One, they do go from a prime passion. Yeah. You know, that's their first intent. They One, want to create a good game. Yeah, the indie scene is interesting. A lot of people compare it to uh, bedroom programmers who made games in their bedrooms and then just sold them in shops and then built And that's where a lot of the people like the EAs came from yeah, or people where, like yeah, this. Yeah. And it's sort of like history repeating itself. But the, good, the thing about indies, which is great, especially for developers like us, is before the only way that you could get your game made was to go to a publisher. They'd loan you money so you could make the game. They'd distribute it. You would get a tiny percentage percentage of that money which you yeah. would need to use to pay them back so you basically didn't make any money yeah and thank uh, except the, the the big publisher but yeah. now uh, thanks thanks to the indie world which is a big part of it's thanks to the internet and community and, and social publishing media. all these platforms yeah. allowing for that exactly and I think another thing that's helped these people a big hot topic at the moment is crowdfunding yeah. now you don't even need to go to somebody to get money it's you just, just say directly I wanna, to the people yeah, who make it and do that's you really want great. this if you do then give us some money and we will make it happen but with this kind of wonderful world, there's always, with these wonderful concepts, of course, there's always people, people who want to abuse people it. People who want to abuse it, for sure. Unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. You know, for um, the exper you know, the experimentation with it is a good thing, but yeah, the abuse of it is that's 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 not a good thing because it's going to, especially with the Kickstarter. Uh, uh, elements yeah. where where they're just trying to get as much money from people like directly and you know maybe things aren't being finished or aren't being made at all and you know that money just disappears 
you know that、yeah. that takes away the trust of the consumer, and that's very dangerous to the industry. Yeah, that's that's the worst one. But this, well, that's a pretty bad one. Just like running away with the money or making something that d- doesn't meet expectation. Exactly. The worst、yeah. one, I think, though, because this defeats the entire point of Kickstarter. Is、um, people who use Kickstarter to get money so they can prove to a publisher、yeah. that there's money in this,、yeah. completely defeating the purpose of this goodwill and people coming together and making stuff.、Yeah. I think that's really it. There's there's these. Big guys who can't take risks and they're trying to do new things, which causes problems. And then you got these little guys trying to do great stuff, which attracts the wrong kind of people.、Yeah. So I think the I think the moral of、uh, the indie world and crowdfunding is that these things are wonderful, but you have to be responsible with yeah, them. Yeah, very much so. And、um, you know, it's very good to see that the little ones are getting an opportunity. Thank God that option is there. That's really this、great. is the best time to be in the games industry. I think I'm really glad that I'm making games. So it's、now. important, you know, to support your artists, but you know, be vigilant, you know, on what where you're going to spend your money on. Yeah. Your winner. That just sums up everything about this game. You ready for this? This week's buy, download, delete will give you an idea what kind of gunk lies on the bottom of the video game barrel. Big rigs over the road racing. Now behold and be amused because this Joker is about to take a shit in your pants. You expect a game, but as you play, you'll soon discover it's nothing more than an unfinished prototype. There's no challenge to the game, for you will always win, no matter what. Depending on which version you play, it will determine whether your opponent moves or not. But hey, at least they try to give you an illusion of being in a race. Also, the physics of the game are all over the place. Just look at it. To put the icing on the shit cake, this game has been available in stores, multiple versions of it as well. People paid money for this. Now, not if we can help it. The experience of playing something like this is interesting and funny, nonetheless. However. It's not worth your money. If you are willing to spend money on games like this, even if it's meant to be ironic, you're telling a very specific kind of person that more games like this should be made. Don't, just don't, please. Warp Zone is giving Big Rigs Over the Road Racing a download. Make sure you delete it after playing. Oh my! When are you going to give me the number of your yoga instructor? 